Good afternoon, and thank you everybody for joining us in this amazing, powerful, and educational Lunch and Learn. I just want to remind you that this Lunch and Learn is brought to you by family partners of Maurice in Sussex County. My name is Patricia Houston, and I'm here with an amazing team. I'm going to start right here. We have Christina Elwashi. Also, we have a Tracy Zemar. And Gina Grimaldi. Welcome up. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, we are from the NJ4S program. It's a new program introduced to the state. Um, and I'm just here to tell you a little bit about what NJ4S is and what we do. And then I will hand it off to my colleagues, Tracy and Christina, to talk a bit more about the substance use part of it. Um, but just to start as an introduction, so like I said, we are from NJ4S. We operate out of the Mental Health Association of Mars and Sussex County. And uh, really what we do is, so, so we are a statewide network of support for students and their family. NJ4S, I should probably start with that, stands for New Jersey um, Statewide Student Support Services. So we are creating that statewide network of support for students and their families offered to all New Jersey school districts. So there are a couple, we're calling them hubs in every county. MHA is responsible um, for Mars and Sussex. However, they are in all counties in New Jersey. Um, really what we're trying to do is just recognize the whole family in addition to the individual student, um, just as the focus of support and, you know, we're working on things like increasing academic achievement, uh, emotional safety and well-being, um, trying to provide a standard uh, set of supports and services with local adaptations. So um, involving communities and um, really um, like implementing uh, different programs and integrating those programs into the communities with schools. Um, and trying to intentionally integrate with existing statewide and community-based services. So one thing that's really important um, is we're not like replacing any services that are already in place in your communities or your schools. We're just trying to add a little bit more because we know how um, there's really a youth mental health crisis right now. Um, it, it's considered a public emergency. Um, youth, youth mental health, and a, there's just a demand for statewide solutions. So we have a really good opportunity here to partner with all different types of organizations and make sure that the students and the communities are getting the support that they really need. Um, so how we operate is, I had mentioned there's other hubs, is what we're calling them. There's 15 in total. Each one um, is going to be in specific county so you'll have one for your county and we are we have a robust staff so there's a director an assistant director we have prevention consultants like myself uh, licensed clinicians and some other support staff um so it's a pretty pretty good team that we have going on here and um like i said we're going into schools we'll host workshops and seminars and assemblies. And um, that's uh, mostly what the prevention consultants are doing on a wide range of topics. So it can be anything from general mental health and well-being. We had just recently done one on bullying, uh, social media and mental health. My colleagues, Tracy and Christina, focus primarily on the substance use topics. And we educate students, community members, parents, teachers, staff and faculty at schools, really everybody. Um, and then we also have some, like I had mentioned, licensed clinicians, a part of our team as well. And they are there for that one-on-one -on -one student support. And that kind of um, transitions into how we determine, you know, what service is best for the need that's, that's, there. So we have different levels of service. We have tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one and tier two are going to be primarily with the prevention consultants. And those are those seminars and workshops and assemblies I was talking about um, that we'll go in and we'll do in the schools or the communities. Tier two is more focused on um, evidence-based programming. So we have a 
full list of different evidence-based programs. And those are just um, a bit more structured in nature rather than just a uh, presentation. Um, that's our tier two uh, we'll be covering. And then tier three is that one-on-one -on -one support for the students who have a bit of a higher need. And that's who our licensed clinicians will be working with. Um, so it's great. We really have services spanning all throughout the, the level of needs. Other than that, I, I think that pretty much covers it. We are really just getting started and, and, and getting out there. We've been to a couple schools so far, a few schools in Sussex, a few schools in Morris County. And um, yeah, if there's any, any questions towards the end, I'd be happy to, to answer them. But as far as that goes, I will hand the rest of the presentation over to my coworkers, Tracy and Christina. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Jenna, for explaining um, NJ4S. So thank you all for coming um, and Patricia for having us today. Um, so I am Christina. Along with Tracy, we work at the Center for Prevention and Counseling. Um, and as Jenna explained, we are partnering with MHA for the NJ4S grant. Um, and the way that I'm kind of talking about it with the schools and uh, advisors that I've talked to is it's a way for us to expand what we're already doing. And I think Jenna um, really put it well that the goal is to um, enhance the programming that's happening for schools and provide them with even more support. So for the Center for Prevention, we go into schools and provide um, prevention programming and lots of activities. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, Red, Red Ribbon, Ribbon Week which is something that's happening next week. Um, but we already have these um, partnerships with schools where we're trying to provide prevention support um, and programming. And this is a way that we can expand it even more. Um, NJ4S also is partnering with um, Prevention is Key in Morris County. Um, so we'll be providing even more schools with um, the programming that we already do. So we're really excited about that. Um, today, we're going to provide a little bit of information and background about Red Ribbon Week, which is next week. Um, and so Tracy, if you want to go on to the next slide. So Red Ribbon Week, and I'm I'm trying to avoid the W sound, so sorry if I stutter a little bit. Um, so it's next week, and it's an annual event that's celebrated in schools and communities that started in 1985. So it's been going on for a very long time. And it's a way for youth and communities, schools to come together to celebrate um, healthy lifestyles and drug-free life. Um, we're making pledges to make good choices and we're doing it together as a community supporting youth in, these, um, in this commitment. Um, so you can go on to the next slide, Tracy. So... In our prevention programming, we know that it's really important to build refusal skills for youth um, to be able to stand up to the negative influences like peer pressure and advertising um, and things that would lead young people to make unhealthy choices. But we also want to create opportunities for youth to be positive influences to each other, to their communities. So Red Ribbon Week is a great opportunity for youth communities and schools to kind of highlight some of the great choices that youth are making. So some of the things that we do at CFPC with schools is um, plant the promise, which is schools will be planting red flower bulbs, which will bloom beautifully in the spring. Um, and it just kind of symbolizes the pledge that they're making. It's a great way to visualize that they're in it together. So again, our youth are influenced by the choices that other youth make, and they can encourage each other in positive ways and see that visually that, you know, they're making this commitment together. Um, What's your anti-drug is a contest where students will design um, the things that inspire them to stay drug free, to commit to being drug free. So we talk a lot about how substances affect your health and your ability to do the things that you love. 
Um, we also talk about the ways with youth that they can be inspired and that they can have those natural highs. So they get their highs, their enjoyment, their love from sports, from spending time with friends, um, from the, the talents and skills that they have and that they love to share. Um, and there's also a contest for K through third graders, which, um, talks about what makes them happy, um, the things that bring them joy, um, and just really encouraging that self-esteem building. We know that self-esteem is the foundation of making he healthy choices um, as we grow. Next slide, Tracy. So some of the ways that people can participate, so schools can um, be as simple as wearing red ribbon ribbons or wearing red. Um, they can have spirit weeks. They can do a school-wide pledge where we're all committing together to stay drug-free, um, decorating schools with positive drug-free messages, uh, decorating doors, having contests, um, having health and wellness fairs. Business owners can get involved um, by distributing red ribbons, advertising the week. Um, don't I love this idea, donating coupons to students who sign a pledge. Um, and supporting, uh, sponsoring a classroom or a school. And communities can host community events um, and distribute information, uh, create and um, share PSAs, um, and get all the aspects of the community informed and to get involved. So these are some ways that we together as a community can highlight drug-free choices. Um, Again, at the Center for Prevention, we go into schools regularly and provide life skills um, and positive, healthy choice-making curriculum. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Tracy, who's going to do one of our activities that we, it's a shortened version of something that we do with youth. And if you guys have, um, if you want to do this on your computer or you have a cell phone, we'd love for everyone to participate. So Tracy, if you're ready. All right, thank you. So um, in order to continue our theme here and to move into the education portion of uh, Red Ribbon Week, we're gonna do a Kahoot. So a Kahoot is a website-based um, activity game that you can participate in. Um, you can use your phone to scan the QR code and play from your phone, or we will drop the link. Um, Christina, would you mind putting the Kahoot? Um, it link in the chat. Um, if you'd like to use the link to get there, you can do that. And in a moment, I'll pull up a screen that has the game code and you can use that to enter the game. Um, if you can't get in or you feel really uncomfortable uh, participating in it, I'm sure we have a couple of people that will participate and you can just kind of play along at home. All right. So the game pin is going to come at the top there. So if you are on your computer, you can pop that in. Um, and if you are on your phone, you can scan that QR code. All right, so as part of the education component, we're gonna talk a little bit about vaping, right? So we're gonna give some education behind it. If you are super competitive, this is your chance to shine. Uh, you know, I'm looking at some of you, and I, you know, I can tell. But for everyone else who, you know, maybe you're like, I actually don't know that much about vaping. This is a great opportunity to learn a little bit and kind of, you know, see what's out there and how things have kind of changed. All right, so we're going to get started. So what are e-cigarettes? Okay, so we've got our answer here. So we've got Battery powered vaporizer used to inhale liquid nicotine. Okay, so if we think about that, we know that a vape has a battery in it, okay? And that's what's heating up this e-liquid, this juice which contains nicotine that people are inhaling. So these can be reused or disposable devices. All right, so we'll see where we got to on our scoreboard. Love it. All right, so just to get a visual here, just in case maybe this isn't part of your life or you haven't really had much contact with these. So this is e-cigarettes. So um, we have tanks and mods to the left. We have vape pens sort of in the middle there. So um, noticing that there are a couple of different types, like one that looks a little more like a traditional cigarette. Um, we've got something that looks like a pen. We've got something that looks like a USB. 
Um, then we get into pod beads. So we have these little pods that don't look much like traditional cigarettes at all. Um, and actually might look like something um, familiar to you in other places. Um, and then we finally have our disposable e-cigarettes. So if we look at the variety of devices, we know that tanks and mods were kind of the beginning. That's kind of where all this started. And then eventually they kind of moved into more of these vape pen variations um, to what we see today. Now, if we look at those pod-based things, um, would you have even guessed that those were um, a vape? You know, would you even have thought like this is something um, that you would uh, use to to vape on? Probably not, right? Because it looks like something else. It could be a highlighter. It could be a school supply. Um, so if we're thinking now in terms of the things that don't quite look like cigarettes anymore and maybe look like USBs, um, you know, somebody who is older than 21, you know, they don't need to hide these things. But for youth that are younger than that, um, there's a reason why these things look like school supplies. There's a reason why they kind of blend in. Um, so we want to just keep being aware that there's new products that are going to be on the market um, and they're going to, you know, keep looking sort of disguised in this way. So let's go on to our next slide here. So how many vape flavors of vapes are currently being sold? Is it 500, 2,000, over 15,000 or 8,000? All right, so over 15,000 flavors. Uh, can you even think of 15,000 flavors? I've got maybe 15 in my head somewhere, but once you start combining flavors, once you start thinking about every possible combination, um, it really adds up. So, you know, initially when people are smoking, they're smoking traditional cigarettes, there's no need for these flavors, but when, we start seeing youth getting interested in it, that's where we start to see all these flavors pop up. Um, so we know that they're introducing, you know, flavor bands and things like that to kind of minimize it. But we also know that, um, you know, this is the kind of thing that is attractive to youth, especially. Okay, let's see where we're at on the board. All right, Smiling Gecko in the lead. Okay, let's go into our next question. All right, vapes are devices that produce nicotine and are additives in the form of a vapor. All right, so it is actually false. Okay, so they are sold as vapes, so they must be delivering vapor, right? The answer is no. And this is sort of produced this false halo around vapes as something that's better than cigarettes, but they're not. Um, what's actually in a vape is not water vapor at all. It is basically an aerosol. So if you think about some of the cleaning products around your house, if you think about Lysol, WD-40, maybe you have some hairspray sitting around, right? Shake that can up, you spray it, and those particles, those are the aerosol, okay? And you can see those little particles. And that's exactly what's going into people's lungs when they smoke. So if we were being really honest, we wouldn't even call them vapes at all. We'd call them like aerosolizers, right? Uh, not quite as catchy, but it doesn't have the health halo that's something where people assume they're just getting water vapor um, and they're not. So just remembering that those tiny droplets are what stays in the lungs and enable it to kind of expand into a larger portion of the lung. All right, on fire. All right, the amount of nicotine in a vape pod is equivalent to one cigarette, one pack of cigarettes, a cigar or 10 cigarettes. All right, so we've got this being equivalent to one pack or 20 cigarettes. Um, so that's a lot in one pod. Um, if we think about um, something being 200 puffs, right? Is somebody really counting the amount of times they've done that? Um, you know, cigarettes are unhealthy, but the a person knew like when they finished their cigarette, they were like done with their cigarette break, right? Um, there was sort of this visual cue. With vapes, there's no such thing. Um, they can keep puffing and, you know, and in fact, they're more likely to. Um, it's hard to know how much they've done and how much they have left. So now we are seeing people doing um, just vaping at such a, a higher level. So um, we really want to be aware that, that there is no real stopping point until that pod is basically empty. 
All right, it's so rat. Beautiful. Okay. True or false? Nicotine can help with stress, anxiety, and depression. Yeah, that is false. Okay. So despite all of the marketing to cause us to believe that is the case, um, despite maybe having, you know, people in our lives who come home and want to have a cigarette or have a cigarette at the end of the day, right? Um, it can release those feel-good hormones, um, that dopamine, which creates pleasure and relaxation, but ultimately it doesn't last. So it kind of spikes that dopamine and then the crash is even worse um, than they were feeling before. So we can definitely see people be more stressed and anxious, right? Which causes them to want that next cigarette or that next pop of vape. Um, so really just talking to youth in your life. So youth or, you know, maybe there's some adults in your life, right? Um, talking to them about what are some ways they can get that feel-good dopamine without turning to substances. So maybe you can exercise, maybe being part of a team, spending time with friends, um, playing with your dog. I know my cat, huge source of dopamine for me. So thinking about those ways that we can get that natural sense of relaxation and, you know, without that sharp um, cutoff, right? Without that crash. All right. So let's see where we're at here. Smiling Gecko is really holding it down, I gotta say. All right. So what are the four ma main ingredients inside of e-cigarettes? Oh, very good. All right. So, um, yeah. So actually, if you notice, you search that answer, you actually see that there's no water, right? So the one thing that vapes kind of conjure up is not even in there. Um, so we always have nicotine, um, even when, you know, vapes are saying they're a healthier alternative, it's still in there. Um, so it's that addictive chemical found in all tobacco products, right? Um, propylene glycol is found in fog machines. Um, glycerin vegetable oil, glycerin is found in additives and sweeteners that are added into food, which we know that we can ingest, we can eat those things, but we're not so sure about what they do when they enter into people's lungs. All right, so we really want to consider the things that are safe to put into our bodies and that really, you know, make people feel good as opposed to make your health even worse. All right. So what other chemicals are found in vapes? You're on to me. Whenever there's an all of the above, it's always all of the above, right? So we've got all these terrible things that are inside vapes. Uh, formaldehyde. So we know that best as like maybe you were in a uh, science class, right? And you preserved some, some specimen in formaldehyde. Um, diacetyl. So diacetyl is a chemical... Um, that's associated with a condition called popcorn lung. Now that might conjure up an image of, you know, little pieces of popcorn in there, but ultimately it was folks that worked in a popcorn factory um, that ingested this chemical, right? And we started to see difficulty uh, with breathing. They were wheezing, um, coughing, had shortness of breath. Um, and that is actually what is related to the popcorn lung. So um, you know, seeing that difficulty with breathing is really um, what is the, the problem with diacetyl. Um, and so, you know, being aware that also there are heavy metals in these products as well, um, things that can, you know, cause micro tears in lungs. So being cautious about what we put in our bodies always, but being aware that these chemicals are inside of that. All right. So how much money does Pig Tobacco spend on marketing and advertising each year? All right, so I don't know about you, but I don't even know how I would spend $9 billion. But I know how Big Tobacco spends it. So they spend $25 million each day, um, more than a million dollars an hour, um, to influence people and to convince them that they should buy this product. Um, so, you know, we're seeing this in social media influencers, at sporting events, musical, uh, musical festivals, um, different celebrities might be, you know, kind of pushing these brands as well. Um, so we try to connect with you. So Christina was talking about some of the programs we do in the community. Um, but yeah, we try to go in and talk to them and, and talk about what's influencing their choices. 
um, and ultimately thinking about what is the best choice for you. So um, we ask you where they see these things and how it influences them and you know what they think happens when they smoke, what they think happens when they be. Um, and um, that's how we kind of have to undo some of this, this marketing is really things like the Truth Initiative um, and Incorruptible Us is another youth organization um, that can help kids kind of learn more about taking care of their health. So where can New Jersey residents go for resources to quit smoking and vaping? All right, so yeah, we can call all of these. So these lines, these text lines, these call lines, quit centers, these are all really good places to go if somebody needs help quitting smoking or vaping, or if they're just interested you know, part of it is just getting them interested in the idea that there are resources there, there's a community there, there are people that can help them quit. Um, we really didn't get into um, some of the other issues with vapes and so we really just focused on nicotine, but also just being aware that a lot of times these vapes um, may also be purchased uh, with marijuana. So, you know, while vaping, um, you know, we can definitely have these quit lines and resources available. Just being aware that there are other kind of additives that can go into these vapes as well that people can buy. So feel free to use any of these resources, um, tobaccofreenj.com, um, as well as any of the quit lines or quit centers. You can also reach out to myself or Christina if you have any questions or want us to connect you um, with somebody at Tobacco Free Healthy New Jersey. All right, let's see how we did. All right, so this is our final podium. Well done, everyone. Uh, we really appreciate your, your efforts here. Okay, so now that we've kind of said all that, um, I hope you got a little something out of that. Um, we can, I think, Patricia, open it up to any questions. Before we go into our Q&A session, I just wanna thank each one of you for being here and also to the Mental Health Association and the Center for Prevention and also to Tina. I know Tina was, oh, she is still here. Um, both Christina, Tracy, also you, Gina, thank you very much for being here and doing this presentation for us, our community. I know a lot of families are going to benefit from this. Uh, before we go into our Q&A session, is there any final thought that you would like to share with us? I think um, for us, it's really just, you know, everything we're doing here is to really connect with and educate you. Um, the challenge is that, you know, if we don't get them started with some learning is that they're going to learn about it everywhere else. So we really just want to set the record straight. Here's what's out there. Um, and here's what you can do about it. Here's how you take care of your own health and yourself. So we're here for that. So you can contact any of us, uh, myself, Christina or Jenna. Um, and we can hopefully get some programs going uh, in the community soon. Wonderful. Thank you, Tracy. Christina, Regina? I wanted to um, just kind of touch on something that Jenna said, um, just that, you know, we work with substance use and prevention, but it really goes hand in hand with mental health and the time that we're in right now that it, it really is an emergency, um, you know, coming out of the pandemic higher rates of anxiety and depression in youth. And so we're really excited to be able to provide more wraparound services in schools, you know, where they are, where young people spend most of their time. So. Wonderful. Thank you, Christina. Gina? Yeah, I think you guys said it perfectly. We're, we're so excited for this program program to take off and to really get in and connect with schools, communities, families who really need it. Um, you know, we received the, the list of communities that are high need to mid need to low need. And we're just, we're super excited to, to get in there and, and address those issues. And, you know, if there's any questions on how to connect with us or how to get to us, please, uh, and we all put our contact information in the chat, reach out, and we will make sure that you can get our services. 
Wonderful. Once again, thank you very much, everybody, for thank being you. here. And I want to remind everybody that the Lunch and Learn is being recorded and that you can find the information in the YouTube channel, Family Partners of Maurice and Sussex. You can also find the contact information, website, everything is going to be in the description box below the video. And with that, we are going to move to our Q&A session. Again, thank you very much, everyone.